So let us continue with our discussion of Montel's theorem. So you know so this is so this is essentially Montel's theorem. Uh, so what you do is uh, you take so it applies uh, so you know it is a it is a version of uh, Arzilla Ascoli theorem uh, adapted to the case of analytic functions okay and uh, uh, so as I told you uh, the Arzilla Ascoli theorem uh, everything happens on, an, on a compact set alright you need compactness on the do on the on the set on which your functions are defined all right but here you know uh, of course analytic functions are defined only on open sets on domains okay uh, and we consider them on open connected sets namely domains so what you'll have to do is you have to put all the requirements only on compact subsets okay so let me write this down so let uh uh script f b f m a family of analytic functions defined on a domain D okay inside the complex plane. So D is an open connected set and all the functions in the family script F they are defined on this domain and they are analytic functions okay. Suppose uh, uh, script F is uh, uniformly bounded on D. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> okay. So, so here is again. So I impulsively wrote down something that is too much to expect. So you know, when you want to, uh, wh when you want, when you do the Arzilla Ascoli theorem, you'll say. Uh, you have a family of functions defined on a compact set and is uniformly bounded on the compact set okay then the arzilla ascoli theorem is an e it gives you an equivalence between uh, two statements one st one statement is equicontinuity of the family at each point and the second statement is that every sequence of functions in the family has a uniformly convergent subsequence okay now uh, so you know so you know to expect uh, a family of analytic functions to be uniformly bounded on a whole domain is too much okay. So you should modify this and say that it is uniformly bounded on compact subsets of the domain okay. So I will change this because this, this is too much uh, on compact subsets subsets of T okay. So see a, a property that holds on compact subsets is called a normal property okay a norm so if you have convergence on compact subsets it's called normal convergence if you have uh, uniform boundedness on compact subsets it's called normal uh, normally boundedness okay so uh, so so i can state it as you know uh, f is normally bounded on d okay then uh, so you know what is uh, uh, so what is your uh, so what your Arzilla Ascoli theorem the usual sense will say that you know if you have this uniform boundedness then equicontinuity is a, is equivalent to uh, the fact that every uh, is equivalent to the statement that every sequence has a uniformly convergent subsequence then the following are equivalent. are equivalent uh, um, number 1 uh, script f is uh, equicontinuous uh, 
okay, uh, EQ continues at each point of D. And the uh, uh, the second condition will be every sequence uh, in this family script F uh, has a uniformly convergent subsequence. But now again, you should not expect uniform convergence on a domain. Always, you should only expect normal convergence. That is, you should expect uniform convergence only on compact subsets. So the second statement uh, should be written carefully. You should say uh, that every uh, sequence f n in f has a subsequence f n k which converges normally normally uh, uh, that is uh, uniformly uh, <coughs> on compact subsets of T ok. So, you know uh, the statement I, the, so if you compare this with the Arzil Ascoli theorem, the statement is in the Arzil Ascoli theorem, your family of functions is not analytic. In the general Arzil Ascoli theorem, the family of functions is not analytic, it is only uh, continuous uh, family of functions, okay. But they are complex valued, of course. Uh, so the analytic condition is, uh, uh, is not there, but you have a, a weaker condition which is just continuity. Okay, then, and in the Arzil Ascoli theorem, the functions are not defined on a domain; they are defined on a compact subset of the complex plane. And the condition on F is that it is uh, uniformly bounded on that compact set. Now that is replaced. Now the compact set is replaced by a domain. Okay, therefore the condition of uniform boundedness is restricted only to compact subsets of the domain. All right, and then you have. Uh, then when you have uniform boundedness then the Arzil Ascoli theorem the philosophy is that EQ continuity is the same as the existence of a subsequence that converges uniformly. So EQ continuity condition is going to anyway uh, 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 it is a continuity condition so it, it remains as it is but this con the uh, but the existence of a subsequence which converges uh, uniformly that also you can you should expect only on compact subsets. So that is why we put this we say that uh, uh, the, 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 the you for every sequence you get a subsequence that converges normally right. So this is this is Montel's theorem and actually uh, again you know uh, uh, again you know the, the implication uh, 1 implies 2 is what we are going to prove the implication 2 implies 1 is, is you can prove the same thing uh, uh, I mean if uh, you know uh, 2 implies 1 can uh, be proved just in the way that we uh, have done uh, that that one could do for the Arzil Ascoli theorem okay it is a proof by contradiction okay. So what I want to tell you is that uh, condition 1 will always be true okay uh, condition 1 will always be true uh, because uh, of Cauchy's integral formula for the derivative of an analytic function which will give a bound therefore what will happen is that one will always be true if uh, uh, the family is uniformly bounded and therefore this is always true therefore this is always true okay. So uh, what I want to state is that this first condition is, is superfluous the first condition always holds okay simply because you are not working with just continuous functions you are working with analytic functions. And analytic functions, uh, 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 analytic functions, you know, for analytic functions, you have uh, a good bound for the derivative, and in fact, you have a bound for all orders of derivative. 
uh, derivatives of every order at a point because of the Cauchy integral formula okay. So uh, 1 is always true and that therefore 2 is always true so is so so 2 always okay so let us look at the proof of this uh, uh, so what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll just I'll give the proof of one uh, implies two, which is the uh, which is a slightly uh, technical thing. Okay. Take uh, take a point Z not in the uh, in the domain uh, and and choose a row greater than zero such that uh, the disc mod z minus z not less than or equal to rho uh, is contained in the domain okay so certainly you can do this you can since uh, the domain is an open set z not is an interior point so there is a disc surrounding z not which is contained in the domain and you take a slightly smaller disc its closure will also be contained in the domain and call that radius as rho okay then uh, note that uh, by uh, Cauchy's integral formula what you will have is you see so you know my diagram is like this here is my domain D and here is uh, 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 here is my point is it not there is this I am taking this uh, circle centered at z0 and I am going to take radius to be equal to rho minus epsilon where epsilon is a very small quantity alright and what is Cauchy's integral formula Cauchy's integral formula for the derivative will tell you that uh, 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 for uh, for uh, uh, for any analytic function on on uh, on this uh, closed disk all right uh, the derivative of the function at the center of the disk is given by 1 by 2 pi i integral over this circ boundary circle mod z minus z not is equal to rho minus epsilon uh, you will get g of zeta t zeta by zeta minus zeta is it not is it not square this is the Cauchy integral formula for the derivative right this is just Cauchy's integral formula right for uh, for G analytic in uh, in this disk okay uh, epsilon uh, very small. So this is I am I am just writing Cauchy's integral formula I am not doing anything else right. Now in particular uh, uh, so this is you get a bound you get a bound by you know putting by, by parameterizing uh, this so you will get g dash of z0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral from 0 to 2 pi so you know the points in the z on this disc can be parameterized as zeta equal to z0 plus rho minus epsilon into uh, e power i theta this is how I can parameterize that circle okay so where theta varies from 0 to 2 pi so if I transform this integral to a real integral to, to an integral based on a real parameter so what I will get is I will get mod I will get I will get uh, I will get g of uh, so I will plug in that d zeta is going to be uh, rho minus epsilon uh, i e power i theta d theta divided by uh, this is going to be zeta minus z0 is 
rho minus epsilon the whole square d power 2 i theta okay this is what I am going to get right and now what I am going to do is I am going to take modulus and note that the modulus of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the modulus okay uh, I am I am going to use that inequality which is always used whenever you are estimating integrals it is otherwise known as the ML formula so uh, or it leads to the ML formula so mod g dash of z0 is uh, going to be mod of this thing on the right but that will be uh, less than or equal to uh, uh, you know if I take uh, if I take mod you must you, you outside I will get 1 by 2 pi alright and then the modulus of the integral is less than equal to integral of the modulus so I will get 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi and I will get uh, L uh, so let me put M uh, into rho minus epsilon uh, this mod of I, I e power i theta is going to be 1 and mod d theta is just d theta because theta is increasing uh, along along this uh, interval and here I am going to get uh, rho minus epsilon squared and this is again going to be 1 and so this is what I will get where what is this m, m is uh, bound for uh, the modulus of g on uh, on this boundary circle okay where mod g is less than or equal to m on uh, mod z minus z not equal to rho minus epsilon okay so here this is just an inequality and you know if I calculate this if I integrate 0 to 2 pi d theta I will get 2 pi this 2 pi will cancel with this 2 pi I will simply get m by rho minus epsilon this is the bound I get okay this is for an analytic function uh, on this which is analytic on this closed disk now what I am going to do is now I am going to apply this to all the functions in my family script f to all the functions in this family see if you take all the functions in this family all right they are of course analytic they are analytic in d therefore they are analytic on uh, such disks all right and uh, the point is they are all uniformly bounded so I can find a single m which will work for all the functions okay and therefore I will get this uniform bound for all the derivatives okay and that is good enough to tell me that uh, uh, the family is equicontinuous okay so so let me so let me make the statement uh, uh, for uh, any uh, since since f is uniformly bounded on uh, mod z minus z not less than or equal to uh, uh, rho you see you see you, you have the uniform boundedness on compact subsets of d okay therefore you I am applying this uniform bounded boundedness uh, I have this uniform boundedness on this this closed disk and this closed disk is compact because it is closed and bounded all right so this is a compact subset of d therefore this family is uniformly bounded on this okay so which is compact there exists an m such that mod f uh, is less than or equal to m on mod z minus z not you have this so if you so we have mod f dash of z0 is less than or equal to m by rho minus epsilon uh, as explained above so this this inequality that this this estimate i have got for the modulus of the derivative i apply it to f all right so i get this right and 
now what I want to say so what this tells you is that uh, uh, this is for what first this is for every f in the family. So, what you have got is you have got <coughs> that uh, m by rho minus epsilon is a is a uniform bound for all the derivatives ok. So, what you have so what you have got is that uh, uh, all the derivatives are uniformly bounded at that point. Now, you see now it is a fact that if derivatives if a you know if you have a family of functions whose derivatives are uniformly bounded then uh, that family is equicontinuous ok. So, so I will I will I will state this as a lemma lemma 1 if uh, so let me write g is a family of uh, analytic functions functions on uh, u uh, which is domain uh, in C and uh, G and T uh, and G dash which is equal to the set of all a uh, small g dash where G belongs to G the derivatives is uniformly bounded in a uh, neighborhood of z0 in u then uh, g is equicontinuous at z0 So, I am I am stating this fact that uh, the uniform boundedness of the derivative imply uh, the uniform bounded boundedness of the derivatives in a family implies equicontinuity of the family. Uniform boundedness of the derivatives uh, at a neighborhood of a point in a family implies equicontinuity at that point. And uh, the proof is uh, the this proof of this lemma is pretty easy. It's just a, it's just given by a simple. Uh, I mean, in the if you want to prove it for real functions, uh, it will follow. I mean, if you are working with uh, real valued functions on a on uh, on a closed bounded interval or on an interval, okay, then uh, the proof will uh, come by applying the mean value theorem, okay. But if you are working with complex values, valued functions, uh, you will have to use integration. So what you do is, see, you know, <coughs> the situation is that. Uh, 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 so you know, I have, uh, I have this u, and uh, I have this point, uh, is it not? And you know, I have this, I have this disk. Uh, 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 centered at z not radius some some r. Uh, mod z minus z not less than r uh, r is greater than 0 ok. Uh, this is this is inside uh, u I can find such an r because after all z not is an interior point of u and u is a open set and uh, what I am given is that uh, all all the uh, all the derivatives is uniformly bounded uh, in the in the neighborhood therefore there exists an m such that uh, mod uh, modulus of g dash is historical to m uh, in mod z minus z not less than r so this is given to me all the bound derivatives are bounded all right and uh, now how do you show that the family is equicontinuous at z0 so what you do is you know you calculate g of z minus g of z0 modulus okay so of course this is for all g in uh, g okay so small g is in script g so uh, small g dash is in script g dash and it's given that script 
g dash is uh, bounded uniformly bounded in a neighborhood of the point okay and now what is mod gz minus gz0 you see uh, what you can do see this is integral it is this integral along the straight line path from z0 to z of g dash of z dz g dash zeta d zeta of course you know if you integrate g dash you will get g because uh, after all uh, uh, derivative of g is g dash you can uh, you can integrate uh, uh, g dash to get g okay mind you g is analytic g dash is also analytic okay and uh, therefore this integral is actually independent of the path uh, chosen uh, in a simply connected neighborhood of z0 and of course we are always considering this this disk surrounding z0 which is simply connected okay so for example you can take z to be any point here and you can take the you can simply take the straight line segment from z0 to z and you can integrate all right but then again you use the fact that modulus of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the modulus so what you will get is that this is less than or equal to the uh, integral from z0 to z mod g dash of z mod d zeta okay and but what is mod, but mod g dash is you know uniformly bounded by this m so I will get this is equal to this is less than or equal to m times and integral from z0 to z mod d zeta will give you the length of the arc from z0 to z which I am considering and that is I am considering that to be a line segment so I will simply get mod z minus z0 this is this is the value of integral from z0 to z mod d zeta okay normally when you integrate mod d zeta along a path you will get the arc length but now I am integrating along the straight line path so I will simply get the straight length of that straight straight line segment which is the mod z minus z0 but you see so this is true for all g in uh, script g okay so so what this tells you is so given uh, epsilon greater than 0 there exists uh, 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 delta which is equal to epsilon by m such that uh, mod z minus z0 lesser than delta which is epsilon by m implies mod g z minus g z0 is less than epsilon okay for all uh, g in g this is what you get given an epsilon I am able to find a delta okay the delta only depends on this uh, 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 the of course this this delta I fix the z0 the delta depends only on epsilon okay and this z0 but it is independent of the small g in script g because this m is uniform for all uh, g dash okay but what does this tell you this this actually means that the family script g is equicontinuous at the point z0 that is the definition of equicontinuity the definition of equicontinuity is that this epsilon delta definition for continuity should hold at a point uh, for an epsilon you should get a delta which works for all the which works simultaneously for all the functions in the family so I have got a delta which depends only on epsilon this delta does not depend on g okay that means that the family is equicontinuous at z0 okay so this implies uh, g is equicontinuous at z0 so that that gives the lemma so what the lemma tells you is that whenever you have uniform boundedness in a neighborhood of a point okay then uh, you will have equicontinuity uh, at that point okay now if you now look at what we have written here you, the uniform you have uniform boundedness of the derivative uh, derivatives at that point okay and therefore it will work also in a small neighborhood of this point all right and therefore you will have equi by this lemma you will have equicontinuity uh, at uh, at every uh, at, at every uh, point in the domain so uh, you have you have this bound at z0 okay and it is uniform for all f all right so what will happen is that the same uh, uh, 
you, you can get a bound for all uh, points in a small neighborhood of Z0 okay and therefore the derivatives are all uniformly bounded in a small neighborhood of Z0 and if you apply the lemma you will get that uh, the family is equally continuous at Z0. So this is the statement that one is always true okay that uh, the family will always be equally continuous okay. So for analytic functions uh, the derivatives will be bounded just because of Cauchy's formula okay and since derivatives are bounded equicontinuity will come automatically because that is what the lemma says that whenever derivatives are uniformly bounded you get equicontinuity right. So, so uh, by the lemma uh, uh, f is equicontinuous at z0 at at each z0 in the uh, in your domain okay so uh, so the the point of the story is that you know you equicontinuity is automatic just because the derivatives are all uh, uh, automatically bounded because of cauchy's integral formula right so uh, so everything uh, comes from just uniform boundedness uniform boundedness of your family of analytic functions uh, on compact subsets will automatically give you uniform boundedness on compact subsets of derivatives uh, you will get uniform boundedness of derivatives in uh, uh, na compact neighborhoods of each point and that will give you equicontinuity at that point. And, and in this way you can cover all the points so you get equicontinuity everywhere right. So, so this part 1 this is always true okay uh, and so I will have to I will have to now do this I will have to show that uh, uh, so this is always true the, so therefore this is always true. So the only thing I will have to do is I will have to show that give me a sequence uh, here I will have to show that uh, I can cook up a subsequence which uh, converges uniformly on compact subsets okay. So what I will do is uh, okay so let, let me retain this so start with a sequence in f okay I already know that the whole family script f is equicontinuous at each point of the domain alright start with the sequence now what you do is uh, 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 so we 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 do a we do a clever construction okay so the construction is you know see i want to basically apply arsila ascoli theorem but you know arsila ascoli theorem the usual arsila ascoli theorem that i want to apply will only work on compact sets therefore you know what i have to do is i have to find a, uh, uh, i have to chop down this domain into uh, a union an increasing union of compact sets and apply repeatedly arzela ascoli theorem on each uh, member of the union and then apply a diagonalization arg argument okay so what you do is you you do the following thing so this is the trick this is the trick of chopping up a yeah, non compact set okay into uh, a union of compact sets which cover it so what you do is uh, for every n greater than or equal to 1 uh, uh, let en be so you know you look at <coughs> uh, mod z less than or equal to n this is the disc uh, this is the closed disc centered at the origin uh, radius n okay. So you know if uh, so if I uh, so, so let me draw a diagram so that you can think a little bit uh, uh, just for motivation so you know you have uh, suppose my domain is like this okay of course the way uh, the way I have drawn it the domain is already uh, the closure of the domain is already compact okay but let me do the following thing let me just remove this uh, so that you know uh, you can think of the domain as being probably unbounded so this is part of the boundary of the domain alright. So this is my domain D and uh, this is the boundary of D. Now what you do is you 
look at mod z less than or equal to n all right so that is going to be uh, 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 so you know if i take if i take n i'm going to get a, i'm going to get a disk like this okay and uh, if i take n plus 1 i'll get a bigger disk so this is so this is n and this is n plus 1 as n increases these closed disks uh, they cover the whole complex plane okay the union of all these disks as n goes from 1 to infinity is the whole complex plane all right and now what i'll do is you see i'll intersect it with the set of all points in the boundary the set the set of all points in uh, on in in uh, in the domain d such that uh, the distance of uh, that that point to the boundary is greater than or equal to 1 by n look at this rather uh, funny condition so the condition is i am looking at all the points in the domain okay which lie inside this disk and whose distance from the boundary by distance of course i mean uh, perpendicular shortest distance okay the shortest distance from the boundary is at least 1 by n okay that means i am avoiding points whose uh, i am avoiding points in the domain whose distance from the boundary is less than 1 by n okay so if you if you think of it like this if you think of it like that then what will happen is you know so here is this is the portion of the boundary this is the portion of the boundary all right and what i am doing is I am I am I am I am avoiding all the points whose distance is uh, 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 who so if I take this smaller disc okay if I intersect the smaller disc with uh, uh, which is uh, mod z less than or equal to n with the domain all right what I will get is I will get this okay, this is what I will get all right this is the intersection of the smaller disc mod z less than or equal to n with the domain all right and of course this is the portion of the boundary uh, this is the portion of the boundary uh, that that intersects the disc mod less than or equal to n mod z less than or equal to n right now what you do in this boundary you throw out all those points in the domain okay you take do not take all the do not take all of the shaded region but throw out all the points in the domain whose distance is less than 1 by n okay so it means that you know uh, I, I am throwing out all points here no I am just I am just avoiding all points close enough uh, whose distance is so you know this is I, I, this is what I am throw, throwing out okay I am I am throwing out this because all points here the distance with the boundary is less than 1 by n I am throwing that out I am just throwing out a piece of the domain which is close to the boundary okay and it is this shaded set which is E1 I mean this is En this shaded set this is En okay if you take En plus 1 what will happen is that uh, I I will I will get this whole uh, uh, intersection minus I throw out all points whose distance from the boundary is less than 1 by n plus 1 which is smaller distance than this okay so so you see as n becomes larger see you can see something that is happening as n becomes larger I am covering more and more of the domain because after all as n goes to infinity these disks will cover the whole complex plane therefore as n becomes larger I am covering more and more of the domain and I am uh, what I am throwing out is lesser and lesser I am throwing out uh, uh, points very very close to the boundary of the domain okay therefore in this way I will cover the whole domain so what you must understand is that and of course you know this is a compact set okay this is a compact set and this is a closed set this is a closed set all right this is a compact set and this is a closed set and therefore the intersection is continues to be compact so the moral of the story is that uh, en is compact 
for every n and union n equal to 1 to infinity E n is your domain your domain has been chopped up into compact sets. So, this is the I mean this is the uh, clever trick that one needs to make use of to be able to apply Arzela Ascoli theorem ok. So, so E n is compact for every one for, for every n union of all the E n's is D and of course you know E n uh, 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 you can see that uh, you know uh, E n plus 1 will contain uh, 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 E n plus 1 will contain E n alright E n plus 1 will contain E n so it is increasing it is an increasing sequence alright and another beautiful thing is you take any compact subset of D any compact subset of D will be contained in a sufficiently large E n ok any compact subset of any compact subset subset of D is contained in a sufficiently large in in E n for E n sufficiently large. So, you see these are the these are the properties of this of the E n's the E n's are all compact their unions their union is D they are increasing and any compact subset of D is contained in E n for E n sufficiently large ok and uh, this this is essentially you can think of this as chopping the domain out into uh, uh, I think instead of even saying chopping I should say you know your uh, it is more of a filling out the domain uh, in terms of uh, an increasing sequence of compact subsets the ENs fill out the domain the union is the whole domain ok. Now, uh, now since each EN is compact ok I can I apply Arzilla Ascoli theorem because you know each E n is compact and each E n is a compact subset of D, but on compact subsets of D I have uniform boundedness because it is normally uniformly bounded ok and of course IQ continuity is already there ok. So, I can apply Arzela Ascoli theorem on each uh, compact subset ok. So, what I do is I do the following thing I again uh, 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 I cleverly use again a uh, diagonalization argument and if you recall already in proving the Arzela Ascoli theorem we use a diagonalization argument ok. So, we again use a diagonalization argument apply uh, uh, apply Arzela Ascoli theorem to E 1 uh, to this sequence on E 1 ok. E 1 is a compact subset of D. Uh, and I have a sequence of functions on E 1 that sequence is uniformly bounded why because the sequence is part of the family script F which is uniformly bounded on compact subsets therefore, it is also uniformly bounded on E 1 alright. Now, Arzilla Ascoli theorem will tell you that there is a subsequence which will converge uniformly on E 1 ok. So, to get a subsequence F n 1 of f n that converges uniformly on E 1 ok. Now, what I do is I take this subsequence and apply Arzela Ascoli theorem to it on E 2 ok. So, I go to the next bigger set ok. Now, apply uh, Arzela Ascoli to this f n 1 on E 2 ok to get f n 2 a further subsequence which converges on E 2 uniformly ok. Now, what I will do is I will take this f n 2 and apply Arzela Ascoli theorem to it on E 3 and I will proceed like this ok. 
by induction we get k subsequence f n k of f n k minus 1 which converges uniformly on E uh, k for all k greater than or equal to ok alright and now comes the big deal. Now what you do is you from this uh, see from all this you take the diagonal subsequence that will give you a subsequence of the original sequence that will converge uniformly on compact subsets of T and that is the end of the proof ok. So, so again you know I will again draw that the same kind of diagram that we drew for the diagonalization argument in the Arzilaskle theorem the proof of the Arzilaskle theorem see so you know you have a situation like this you have you have uh, you know you have Fn so you have Fn1 and then I have the subsequence Fn2 then I have the subsequence f n 3 and so on and so this is you know this is some f i 1 uh, uh, f i 2 f i 3 and this is this is the sequence it converges uniformly on e 1 ok. Then here I have f j 1 f j 2 f j 3 that converges uniformly on e 2 then I have f uh, k1 f k2 f k3 that converges uniformly on e3 okay and and it goes on like this and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this diagonal subsequence okay you define fm uh, where fm is equal to mth member of f and m ok. Then f m is contained in the intersection of all these uh, subsequences which is in uh, of course everything is a subsequence of f n converges uniformly on compact subsets of T and that finishes the proof and why does it converge uniformly on compact subset of D because you take any compact subset of D any compact subset of D is in some E n and ok and uh, so you take any compact subset of D it will be in some E k but on E k capital F k capital F k plus 1 capital F k plus 2 etcetera they all converge uniformly on E k ok. So, this sequence of functions eventually converges uniformly on every compact subset of uh, D therefore it converges after all uh, convergence itself is an eventual thing it has to happen only beyond a certain finite stage alright. Therefore, you get the last statement that uh, this sequence converges uniformly on compact subsets of D ok and that that gives the proof of uh, 1 implies 2 ok where 1 is already true we have seen so we have proved 2 is true ok and, uh, uh, and that gives the proof of Montel's theorem ok. So you see it is a uh, so the, the clever thing is to chop the domain up into these increasing sequence of compact subsets and then to repeatedly apply Arzela Ascoli theorem and again get a apply a diagonalization argument ok. So, so I will stop here and we will continue with the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem in the next next lecture.